Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh <laughs> review weekly. What am I doing? Another Foosh weekly. Mm. As always, I'm Robo, and today's comment of the weekly comes from Bad Wolf Media, who says, Robo, my dude, busting out the So I Married an Axe Murderer reference. That was just flawless, and I hope intentional. It was intentional, because I was a teenager in the late 90s, so of course, there's gonna be Mike Myers quotes just kind of floating around in my brain. The problem with something like that is, if you watch the live streams, you've probably picked up on this a couple of times, but I've become that cliche older person who thinks they're getting a movie quote right, but it's actually wrong. And then I pause for the reaction and the person I'm talking to is kind of like, well, that's not right. What? just happened. You know what I mean? You all know people just like that. So when that popped in my, well, w when it popped in my heed last week, I had to double check myself because my first instinct was to say, I'm going to sob myself to sleep on my oversized pillow. Anyway, toys. Here's a Kickstarter you may have already heard about, but if you haven't, ooh. imagine historical warriors thrown into a future time, updating their traditional designs with modern technology making them look like a cohesive team and pitting them against a common threat. Cherry on top, make them 112 scale action figures and you have my attention. Because that's what we're looking at with the Invincible Toys Futuristic Combat Soldiers. Okay, the name is just square on the nose, but I like it because there's no nonsense. They're just ass kickers from different time periods. That's it. <laughs> it's all right there in the name. There's the Ranger who comes in both standard camo and then the Kickstarter exclusive spec op stealth version. There's a Plains Warrior and a Spartan. And finally, Samurai and Cowboy. That's right, Cowboy. I'm your raspberry. Look to be about $35 a piece, but it, the more you back, the cheaper the price becomes. So how many Cowboys am I gonna need? Ooh. Mm. The campaign has 24 days to go. If you're interested, link is in the description. We talked about the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse 3 Jokers assortment last week with Batman and Batgirl and Red Hood and Joker and Joker. Three Jokers. Where's the third Joker? The Killing Joke comedian Joker was shown in the group shot of the three Jokers, but never went up for pre-order with the rest of them. So of course, as soon as I finish editing and post up the weekly, Boom, pre-order page on walmart.com. It seems the third Joker in a storyline called Three Jokers is an exclusive. To recap, two of the Jokers, easy to get on any of your favorite online retailers. The third Joker sold out quick on walmart.com. Granted, a lot of the McFarlane Toys exclusives aren't too awful hard to track down, but there's always those few that spoil the bunch. Hopefully this isn't one of those. $20 supposedly hits in December. This isn't new news, but it is new pictures of some Mattel masters. There's too many M's in this. <laughs> you don't know how many times of ma 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 ma. Some new pictures of some already revealed Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse figures. Just giving us a better look at both Fisto and Stinkor in all of their crazy glory. The Masterverse proportions are still in play here, but offset by the character's chest harnesses and facial features. Stinkor's skunk-like qualities broaden the face, which helps bring everything together, and did we know about the masked head? I don't think we did. Or at least I didn't, or I don't remember remembering. And then there's Fisto, whose beard elongates the face slightly. It helps bring everything together, even if the head sculpt itself matches He-Man in size. Like I always say, beards make everything better, except eating soup and wearing uh, jackets that zip all the way up. But everything else, just better. <laughs> These two are a part of Wave 3, who also includes Scareglow. We know what he looks like. He's already been released in exclusive form. And then Andra, who was debuted at PowerCon, I think it was. $24 a piece, scheduled for November. For five months, we have been working with this picture for the Mattel Jurassic World Amber Collection Robert Muldoon. But no more. No more, I say. Amazon posted their pre-order page, and with that we get more pretty promotional pictures. And can I just say, Mattel, oh, you did a good job with this face. It's just so full of fear. So much personality. I, I love it. It's not what we're used to. Okay, I'm not trying to dog on Mattel. I've been known to do that, but I'm not trying to. Because with the rest of this line, we usually get just normal stoic looks. But here, oh, there's so much happening. But if you're not impressed with that, there's also the calm, cool demeanor face 
and then the hat is removable to swap between the two cranium choices. Then, even though I usually picture him with a big old shotgun, the weapon accessory, or rather say weapon accessory, is called the Dino Shocker. I don't buy a lot of these, but I may have to pick this up just because of how good that face looks. I, I can't get over it. He can just stand in the back whispering, Cunning Girl. $20 listed as releasing later this month. NECA with the teases, always with the teases. Here is a sneak peek at their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, Toka and Razar. I'll admit, I don't remember these guys in the cartoon, and I haven't seen Secret of the Ooze since it was originally released back when. So, mm, Razar being this much bigger than Toka is kind of messing with my mind. Not in a bad way, just in a... Uh, my mental image with nothing to back it up way. You know, like social media. <laughs> it's just there, but I have no facts behind it. The NECA movie pair is about the same size, so maybe that's what I'm going off of. And it just looks odd when... <laughs> well, I guess it makes sense that the snapping turtle is smaller than the wolf, because that's what happens in real life. But that's okay. They're not for me. They're for the actual cartoon fans. I don't go this deep, but there are people who do. And that's a beautiful thing. Here you go. I'll probably appreciate the figures when I run by Veeb's house. He has them up on the shelf and I'll share in his excitement over getting these in cartoon action figure form. They're just cool looking toys. And I'm guessing we're going to see painted versions soon. And then find out where we get them. And then order. And then get them. And then the next thing comes along. And... Our old friend Loose Collector is at it again. Whipping out some great looking Dynamite Comics female action figures for executive replicas. Hey, Purgatory... Vampirella, Red Sonia in Marvel Legends style and scale, and nice companion pieces to the already released Lady Death, stop twisting my arm. And on top of that, it seems Dave has implemented some changes based on customer feedback. I'd like to thank the entire action figure community for your valuable inputs on our Lady Death and Tarna figures. Know that we listen to you and that those who are applied in our new projects. All three figures will come in our new and improved female body design, they will all have a wider range of motion at the neck and especially at the mid-torso. Each will also be getting vertical wrist hinges for their weapon holding hands and lighter and more flexible hair. And he told me there still may be slight changes as production goes along. There's a pre-order window open right now on the Executive Replica site where you can get these for $53 a piece, but that only lasts until sometime in November. After that, pre-orders open up everywhere and they'll be $70 a piece. Should release July of next year, which is kind of funny because now it's a race to see whether this or the Mezco 112 Collective Conan hits our grubby little hands first. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Mesco, what's happening? I wasn't just talking about you. Just today, as kind of their preview night to this weekend's Mesco Con, they solicited their 112th Collective Rumble Society Captain Nemo. Oh, another bearded character. Now, when the preview video went live earlier in the week, I thought, well, okay, that's neat, but I don't need a Captain Nemo for my shelf. Then they posted the pretty promotional pictures, and I'll admit it, I got the toy sweats for a second. Just, oh, look at all this stuff. I mean, not only does it have this familiar retro feel to it, if you saw no title, no background, just the figure itself, you would somehow know that this is a literary character. It just has that feel to it. But then they threw in all kinds of nifty accessories that make total sense in this context. I mean, where else are you gonna find an alternate left arm with a harpoon attachment, along with the trophy documenting the loss of that arm? Plus a lot of fancied up weapons that walk a fine line between too techy and too ocean themed. Just the right amount of both. But in the end, I did pass because, well, one, the almighty budget comes up all the time, always right over your shoulder. Hey, what's going on? House payment? Okay, cool. And two, where the hell am I gonna put this thing? Oh, well, I guess I could. There's Baron Benz, some Aquaticon action. They could fight each other. <laughs> okay, maybe I pre-order. Or maybe I won't. Oh. But if you're in the market, it's $112. It is kind of that con exclusive, comes with extra stuff like a polystone Nautilus and a, and a book data keeper thing and all the accessories and the figure itself so yeah that's not bad no uh, no nope, nope. <laughs> expect more mezco talk next week because like i said mezco con is this weekend they are announcing three reveals each day both saturday and sunday but that doesn't mean it's all 112th collective it may be 
Living Dead dolls or five points other stuff. But there should be a couple at least, right? What are we gonna get for 112 Collective? And since it's going on and this video actually posts to YouTube on Saturday before you post, ha ha, Robo, you missed this. Remember that I record on Friday. Just keep that in mind. Keeping with the mixed medium toys, ooh, this is just, it's smoldering. I don't talk about third-party action figures as much as I used to because there's a lot of them. Holy moly. Every time I go look and it's this and this and this and based on this and not really this, but oh, okay. It looks like that, but it's not. But it is. But it's not. But when the Pocket World 112th scale mask figure came across my screen, I knew I had to talk about it. I had to hunt it down had to pre-order it. From what I hear, this is based on the Dark Toys mask figure. Same head sculpt, same clothing layout, same accessories, just shrunk down to six inch scale. You know how some soft goods covered figures end up looking a bit out of proportion or bulky, it, it, or especially when there's layers? Here, it totally works in its favor. Not that this seems poor quality, just that it's supposed to look cartoony and exaggerated. Plus it was the 90s, so there was always some bulkiness going on in places. Oh, but then there's the accessories. There's a wolf head with its own hat. I would have liked to seen this go a little bit further with the eyes and the mouth, but, or well, the tongue. Then of course there's Milo, who is just kind of a sculpted slug, but there's a lot of personality in that. <laughs> also has the alarm clock and the AUGA horn. The mallet is from that same scene with the alarm clock, but it seems undersized. Bags of money, money to hold, and the mask itself. There's even a stand with a drawer underneath, which again, I don't do one sixth. It may be common there, but you don't see it so much in one twelfth. But the drawer opens and you can store at least some of the accessories. It's just one of those characters that I never really thought about having in action figure form before, but here it is. And now I need it in my display. Where have you been all my life? Or well, at least since 1994. Around $100 should release Q2 of 2022. Oop. Teased last week, but this week Bandai hit us with the full array of promotional images for the Bandai SH Figure Arts movie Deadpool. I, I couldn't be a happier boy. Sure, the Marvel Legends is great, but this is another movie Deadpool action figure. I have Deadpools shoved into all my displays, no matter the property, and this will fit right in, hopefully, with my Star Wars stuff. In the teaser silhouette, he looked kind of scrawny, but now that we see everything all together, full legs and arms and, and torso and head, you know, like people have, the proportions look just about right. It's jarring at first, but I like how Bandai made the shoulder pads a separate piece. In the movie, of course, they're part of the costume, but this helps hide all the shoulder articulation along with the bicep. It just looks more seamless overall. That probably means that it'll pop up in more extreme poses, but I, I think I can live with that. Also like the Legends version, there's a few details that are mixed between the two movies. This figure is mostly based on Deadpool 2, but it's missing the black paint detailing around the shin armor and then the silver on the back of the hands. There may be more, but that's about as nitpicky as I feel like going right now because the costumes between the two movies are essentially the same, except for those details and the shoulder strap going up. Two has detail sculpted into it, one is more flat. Includes lots of hands, swords and sheaths, knife and scabbard, and replacement eye parts of regular, wide, and grin squinting. But you notice what's missing, right? He comes with trigger finger hands, he comes with holes in those hip pads for holsters, but no guns. What in the butt? You know, like in the movie. $70 releases in February of next year. But if you're going to try to import this, I woke up this morning, it was sold out everywhere. Everywhere that I could find. So hopefully this gets like a bluefin release. Some domestic shop picks it up or something because hmm, I don't want to miss it. It's the complete opposite side of the spectrum for Hasbro's Fortnite Victory Royale series. I will still never get used to that. Victory Royale with cheese. <laughs> Running joke. This week, pre-orders went up on all your favorite online shops for Fortnite Victory Royale series wave one, and then the deluxe pack of Sky and Ollie. Oh, and the Loot Shark. $23 a pop, except for Sky and Ollie, who are, how much are they? $35, and they're all scheduled for October. I don't know how how it works that Jazzwares can make Fortnite toys until January, but Hasbro can start releasing theirs now. To me, all that means is 
oh, we're gonna get double the Fortnite goodness for the next couple of months. There are some newly revealed items along with all those pre-orders. There is the purple and orange arcade cabinets. Not only can you use the cabinet in a 112 scale Dio, but it opens up and includes some extra weapons for your Fortnite figures. It's as if I was holding it right now. <laughs> this is my wish hand. Not bad for 11 bucks, especially since one of them comes with Beef Boss right there on the front. And then these are also due out in October. Is it weird to feel like your action figure budget for the month is already blown on the first day of that month? <laughs> Sons of bitches. Because there is actually some Hasbro Star Wars Black Series news to talk about. Oh yeah, bread and butter, bread and butter. Okay, new-ish. <laughs> There's a lot of reuse here, but at least it's new characters. I don't know Republic Commando. I know that surprises you, but I see it pop up on a lot of wish lists. So there's no way in hell I'm going to grab about the GameStop exclusive gaming greats boss. Doesn't break my top 50, but it's a trooper. So I will, ooh, I'll dig deep try to find some way to enjoy it when my pre-order fulfills. I'm guessing there's different representations because I see some comments of, oh, it's too skinny, oh, it's too orange, or oh, it's missing these parts, but then I see a lot of other comments saying it's pretty damn close. And when I Google a picture, this is the first picture that pops up. Comparing those two, it's damn close. They found a way to reuse those Bad Batch bodies. So that's just more money, hopefully, for future new sculpts. Right, Hasbro? Then there's also the fan channel retro carded George Lucas as a stormtrooper. Sorry, disguised as a stormtrooper. Honestly, I don't hate this. In fact, I like the idea. And I can see why they didn't go the George Sakul route because that X-Wing Luke body is so short. This would have looked odd on that. In fact, it'd be kind of tiny for a stormtrooper. Right? But on that front, I love this new stormtrooper body. It, so if nothing else, put the helmet on. I've got another kick-ass Stormtrooper for the shelf. I guess it's the lightness throwing me off. Don't get me wrong, you can look at it and see George Lucas, but then putting it next to a picture of George Lucas, not quite George Lucas. No glasses, maybe that's what's throwing it off. Or it doesn't have the, the mushroomness, and I say that with all the love in the world, how the hair kind of pops out. Here they made it, well it appears they made it fit under the Stormtrooper helmet, so there's a there's just in fact it looks better in the package because it gives it that figure eight shape i don't even know what i'm talking about anymore i'm the last person to be talking about hair right still i can stand this with happy hogan in some scenes on some shelves because he's my mandalorian director not so much my happy hogan over on the marvel shelf i wonder if this head will fit on the stan lee body or peter parker one of those 27 dollars a piece boss is at gamestop the boss, George Lucas, his fan channel. So it's available at those shops like Dorkside Toys. And that's it for this week. No, it's not. We both know better, right? There will be more to talk about. We'll swing back around next Monday, Fush Live, next weekly, and then it just perpetuates itself. If you want to see any of these pictures up close without me all, I'm going to make him an offer he can't turn down. I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. And just throwing this out there, I saw Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, whatever it's called, last night. And if you like the first one, you're going to like the second one. It's the same kind of just wacky fun. It's not meant to have, well, I'm thinking back, I'm trying to think of the overall story and it's just like events that happen one after the other. But I'm not picky when it comes to Marvel movies. I just enjoy myself. I sit there going... Oh, look at that. So Hasbro, we need a movie Carnage. I, I'm not going to get too much into it. No spoilers, but you know what I'm talking about, Hasbro. With the that and that and some of that. That'd be cool, too. If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. And wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Oh, and I ate a ton of popcorn last night too, which I haven't done in a while. And that may be why I'm kind of slow today. I, I didn't want to get out of bed. In fact, I woke up thinking, God, I haven't slept that late in a while. And then I thought, ah, it's Friday. I got to get up and do stuff because it's toy talking day. And that's my favorite day of the week.